Hey, what's up guys? Jeremy here from RoboGeek. In the first Fusion 360 tutorial, we've learned that you can draw your robot path in a 3D sketch inside Fusion and use a simple plugin to import it in RoboDK. It's then automatically converted into a robot path. We've used that technique to simulate a robot holding a car windshield and applying some sort of sealant near the edge. In this tutorial, we will focus on other capabilities of the Fusion 360 plugin to create this example. A robot arm removing excess material from plastic molded parts. From the part 3D model inside Fusion, you can create a machining project and automatically export the generated path inside RoboDK. RoboDK will then transform it into a robot path. Let's see how long it's going to take to create this machining project. Here we have our station. It's a pretty simple setup. A robot mounted on a table, a pile for the freshly molded parts, a pile for the processed ones, and a jig in the middle to hold the part in place while the robot follows the path. Some kind of suction cup could be used to hold the part in place there. The only thing that is a bit strange here is the double tool. For this example, I mixed a small spindle with two suction cups. The idea is to use the same tool for both handling and machining tasks. It's an interesting idea for cycle time, but I already see some limitations. For example, plastic dust could affect the effectiveness of the suction cup. Anyway, it's just an example. And considering that I want to focus on the Fusion plugin, a good part of this example is already done. All the pick and place work for the part will be skipped. Everything is still available in the subprograms folder. So here you have the pick subprogram, the drop subprogram, and everything that is related to the uh, middle station. The main program is composed of multiple subprograms call. Altogether, it picks a part, drop it, in the station, remove the excess material, pick it from the station, and put it on the final stack. The only thing that we need to create for this example is the station one subprogram, which is pretty much the machining project. So let's delete the one we have here. By doing so, if we launch our main program, it will simply move the parts from one stack to the other, uh, passing through the station one. Okay, now it's time to open Fusion 360. So here I have my plastic part. I need to remove excess material in the three holes there and all around the part near the bottom of it. Now we are in the modeling part of Fusion, so we need to go in the manufacturing one. Now we need to create our toolpath. So in this situation, we will use the Swarf tool. I will use this custom tool that I created myself. It's matching the one we have in the RoboDK station. I will start with just this hole for the first path. So now I need to select it and I need my tool pad on the right side of the surface. Perfect. By the way, while I'm doing the same thing for the other holes, I just want to let you know that I'm not putting too much emphasis on the fusion part, mainly because it's not a Fusion 360 tutorial, but a RoboDK tutorial. Autodesk offers enough training material so that you can create pretty much any path you need. On our side, we'll concentrate on how to transform that into a robot path. Okay, now we need to add the bottom part in the same way. This one takes a bit longer to calculate, so I will just uh, fast forward that part. Okay, now that the calculation is done, I can simulate all the paths I just created. It will start from the holes and then the contour. Perfect. Before going any further, I need to go back to RoboDK. 
I need to make sure that the DB ring reference frame is activated. This one is placed at the origin of the machining setup inside Fusion 360. So if I go back to Fusion, we can see that it's at the same place here. Now that the DB ring frame is activated, the program will be exported with respect to that reference frame. So let's do that. Back to Fusion. In the toolbar, we have the RoboDK plugin. Simply select Load Cam Project in RoboDK and wait a few seconds while the program is transferred. If we go back inside RoboDK, we can find the cutting path at its place. A machining project called Plastic Deburring was created. I'll just rename it Station 1 Settings. Now open it and make sure that you use the right reference frame and right tool. You can then update and simulate. It's already looking pretty good, I would say. Cam projects usually come with their approach and retract movements, so we can remove ours and update and simulate again. It still looks pretty good. In this specific project, the default parameters are perfect. The only thing we need to do is to activate and deactivate the spindle. Let's open the program events. We will add a subroutine in path approach and path retract. So spindle one on the path approach. So it will launch the spindle rotation as soon as we start the approach movement and spindle zero with the path retract so that will stop the rotation of the spindle as soon as the retract movement is completed. Okay, update again. No need to simulate here, it won't change anything. Now I just need to modify the name of the program I created. So station one and I can launch the main program. It will process all the parts in the stack. So, okay, this looks good. You can also hide the toolpath, so it looks a bit better. Last thing we need to do is to generate the robot program. In the case of an ABB robot, it's a .mod file, and the language is called Rapid. Let's make sure that we use the right pulse processor. ABB IRC5, perfect. Right click and generate robot program. This new window will appear uh, with the program in it. So here you can see all the move L's we need to follow the path we imported. And here we have our subroutine activating the spindle. In this situation, it needs to be a subroutine that is already created in the robot controller. Uh, and this subroutine will receive a parameter, so 0 or 1, to activate or deactivate the spindle. Same for the set tool, if you have more than one uh, tool, and let's say that you would need to have a tool change, the tool change could be included in that uh, subroutine. And same thing for the set RPM, if you need to follow some kind of methodology to set the RPM to a certain value. Okay, that's pretty much all for today's video. I hope it was helpful. If you are a RoboDK user, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We are releasing new tutorials that will help you fully take advantage of the RoboDK capabilities. Have a good day, guys.